بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد Beloved brothers and sisters in Islam We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost For having granted us this opportunity to gather in his obedience And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us the sacrifice Of standing in salah for his sake and of fasting during the daylight hours for his sake. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the true reward of this. Yesterday we heard how one of the nations was destroyed. And today we are going into the life of one of the highest of the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he is one of the messengers who was sent not only to his people, but even to his own father. At up to this point, the messengers were sent to their nations. Here we find a young boy. He was born in Iraq. He was born in Babylon, Babel. And at that time there was a king known as Nimrud. This king was a very, very powerful king. Allah had given him a lot of power and authority. And if you notice, this is the messenger, the great messenger, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, Abraham. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. He is such a great man that all the messengers who came after him were from his family. Subhanallah. He is such a great man, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested him. Not once, not twice, but again and again. And he passed every single test. And do you know what? He was mostly at the beginning single in his call. Nobody accepted his message besides one young boy. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. And one narration says later on there was who accepted, finished, the two of them at the beginning in the early stages. So what happened? At that time the people were worshipping idols. And they were worshipping wealth. And he was born as he grew up. He's seen his father. His father, the Quran says his name was Azar. So we will use that particular name. Azar, the father of Abraham. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of how Azar used to make idols and sell them. So the young boy, he was watching his father carving idols out of wood and stone. And then he would see his father selling them. Then he would notice people prostrate to these things that his own father was carving. And he would notice people asking these stones and these pieces of wood to give them good health and to grant them long lives and to give them sustenance and to guide them and so on. So he was shocked. One day he seen this big idol. And he tells his father, Oh my father, what is this? He says, these are idols. So it has such a big ear. He says, yes, this is because it hears everything. This idol here, those who will buy it, it will listen to them. So what used to happen at the time, the poor, they could afford small idols, little ones. The rich, they had big, big idols. So when people had a bigger problem, they went to borrow a god belonging to someone else because it was bigger. Allahu Akbar. Look at how foolish they were. Yet they had brains. The young boy, he started asking his father. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of this boy, Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, in 73 different places in the Quran. And in 25 different surahs of the Quran, one of those surahs named after him, Surah Ibrahim. Inshallah, we will read that tomorrow by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Taraweeh. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of this young boy. Allah says, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ رُشْدَهُ مِن قَبْلُ وَكُنَّا بِهِ عَالِمِينَ إِذْ قَالَ لِأَبِيهِ وَقَوْمِهِ ما هذه التماثيل التي أنتم لها عاكفون. And indeed, we had given Ibrahim a long time ago 
guidance from a very early age, well in advance. And we knew very well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all knowing. Allah says, remember when Ibrahim asked his father and his nation, his people, meaning his father's people, what is this that you are worshipping? They said, straight answer, straightforward. In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they said, we are worshipping idols and we will continue worshipping these idols. So he asks them a question. Do they hear you when you're calling out to them? Can they benefit you in any way or can they harm you in any way? They neither said yes, nor did they say no. They kept quiet, but they answered him in a different way. What did they say? They said, we found our forefathers worshipping them. That was the answer. So listen very carefully. They did not say yes. They did not say no. They just said when he asked them, do they hear you when you call? Or can they help you? Can they harm you? Can they benefit you? They said, look, we found our forefathers doing this. And in another verse, they said, we found our forefathers exactly worshipping these idols. So we will continue worshipping the idols. So Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam makes mention of even more questions. He says, You see, these things that you people are worshipping, you and your forefathers that you have been worshipping all along, all of these things that you've been worshipping for so many years, they are all, including yourselves, enemies of mine. There is only one that I worship and that is Rabbul Alameen, the Lord of all the worlds, the creator, whoever made everything here, that is whom I worship. So from a very young age, he understood that I cannot worship a stone or a stick or a piece of wood or anything. I need to only worship whoever made me. That's it. Now this was the sense Allah says, Ataina Ibrahim Rushdah. Allah gave him the guidance at a very young age. He was young, very young. When he started questioning, some narrations say his age was only seven. He started questioning, age of seven. And after that, he grew up to a young boy and so on. And he started questioning, look, my father, what are you doing? One beautiful verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ إِنَّهُ كَانَ صِدِّيقًا نَبِيًّا And remember in the book, the Prophet Abraham, may peace be upon him, he was indeed a very truthful prophet. إِذْ قَالَ لِأَبِيًّا أَبَتِ لِمَا تَعْبُدُ مَا لَا يَسْمَعُ وَلَا يُبْصِرُ وَلَا يُغْنِي عَنْكَ شَيْئًا When he told his father, Oh my father, how can you worship something that cannot hear you, it cannot see you, and it cannot help you in anything? It won't be able to do a single thing for you. يَا أَبَتِ إِنِّي قَدْ جَاءَنِي مِنَ الْعِلْمِ مَا لَمْ يَأْتِكْ فَاتَّبِعْنِي أَهْدِكَ صِرَاطًا سَوِيًّا Oh my father, knowledge has come to me that did not come to you. So follow me, I will show you the right path. I'll show you the guidance. And he's a young boy saying this. Say, oh my father, look, let me tell you common sense. And I want to talk to you. I want to discuss and debate with you. Tell me, what is the answer? The father also said, look, don't question. I don't want any questions. We've been following our forefathers. And the biggest problem is I'm making money out of this. How can you tell me to stop it? Come on. Today, if someone was engaged in, say, for example, haram income, 
either making money out of liquor, making money out of something that is very prohibited, or making money through gambling, making money through stealing and so on. And the son says, Dad, that's very wrong. The father will say, well, who's going to put a plate on your food? Who's going to put a plate of food in front of you there? Straight answer, cash. The people have got cash answers, not even checks so that it can bounce. Allahu Akbar. No, straight. How can you question me? Now, this is something we need to know. Our children will correct us. And that also is a gift of Allah. And it's a test of Allah upon us. Azar, he failed his test. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had mercy on him at that stage by sending his own son to come to him and say, My father, how can you worship something you're making with your own hands? Come on, come on. And the father says, No, keep quiet. And the people said, no, keep quiet. Allahu Akbar. So Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam continues. He says, Ya abati la ta'budi shaytan. Oh my father, don't worship the devil. Now you're falling into the trap of the devil. Imagine as young as he was, he started understanding that there are two forces. The force of the creator, the maker, and there is another force trying to deviate man. And he says, oh my father, don't worship the devil. Indeed, the devil was very, very far from the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The devil transgressed against the command of Allah, of the most merciful. Ya abati inni akhafu an yamassaka adabun min ar-Rahman. Oh my father, I have a very big fear for you that the most merciful might punish you. Look at the words he's using. For the most merciful to punish, it has to be one act of worship. That is shirk. When someone associates a partnership with Allah, the most merciful says that is the time. When he punishes the hadith, in fact, the verse of the Quran, Allah says, Allah will not forgive association of partnership with him, but besides that, he will forgive any other sin he wishes if a person dies in that condition. So if one has engaged in shirk and association of partnership with Allah in worship, then if they have repented before their death, good news, Allah will forgive them. But if they have died on that condition, Allah makes a promise that for that you will have to be punished. So this is why Ibrahim alayhi salam says, I fear inni akhafu an yamassaka adabun min ar-Rahman. Look at the two words being used. I fear that punishment will overtake you from the one who is most merciful. That means you have to have done something really, really, really bad. Allahu Akbar. May Allah safeguard us from shirk. This is why, Wallahi, I swear by Allah, who is the owner of this house, and I swear by Allah who has raised the skies without pillars, that Wallahi, Thumma Wallah, all the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned their people about association of partnership with Allah in acts of worship. Whenever we engage in any act of worship, it must be solely for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it must be in accordance with what was taught by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The reason is Allah has declared that we are not allowed to worship him according to our desires. We need to worship him how he wants us to worship him. And this is why we have to stand in salah at specific times, do specific things. That is called worship. When you're doing what you want, that's not worship. When you're doing what you want, a man can stand waving at the sun all day and he can say, well, I'm worshiping Allah. It makes me happy. Allahu Akbar. That is not worship. Whenever you want to see if you're engaging in something that you feel is going to draw you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ask yourself a question. Were we taught this by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? If we were, you engage in it. If not, we're falling into the trap of shaitan. There are people who drink alcohol and they say, well, look, it brings me closer to God. I, I forget my sins. I'm happy. It satisfies me. There are people who commit adultery 
and they say look that's very very good because you know what that's what man is created for to reproduce and so on and to enjoy and whatever and it makes me happy and it satisfies me well in that particular case if they consider that something that brings satisfaction to them then the devil is somewhere inside that pipeline may allah protect us this is why it's a law the sharia has no gray area whenever there is an area that we think is great just stay far from it the reason is Allah says in the Quran Ya ayyuhal rasoolu Ballig ma unzila ilayka min rabbik O messenger Convey in the most clear of terms Ballig Ballig means To convey in a very very clear manner The message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Convey it very clearly So anything we needed to know Is extremely clear Brighter than the sun May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us This is why the narration says the path which is the straight path when you are walking on it during the day or the night it's as clear as anything it's all the same nobody can be deviated from that straight path except one who is rejected destroyed may allah safeguard us introducing the one islam tv app the ultimate destination to learn about Islam with hundreds of educational videos, lessons, and documentaries. Experience our seven YouTube channels in one place. All content is music free. Download the One Islam TV app now from the Apple or Google Play Store today. Mm -hmm.